Hey guys. So I got another delivery from CreatureCaster the other day. I bought three models, but the one I'm painting first is the Lady of Strife. So today I'm just going to show you what's in the box and then I'll put the model together and talk a bit about the parts fit and the build in general. So straight out of the box, um, you can see here there are quite a few parts for something this small actually. Uh, so let's take a quick look at all of this. Um, you get, <clears throat> first of all, uh, of course this, uh, as usual, this super nice display base here. Um, doesn't have doesn't have the creature doesn't have the creature caster logo on the bottom yet. I guess because this is one of the older models. Uh, otherwise, couldn't possibly be molded nicer and more detailed. You've got this giant demon skull here. Uh, hands for some reason, uh, and of course a lot of rubble. Um, next we have the uh, the torso with uh, the hands, um, well, two of the hands anyway, uh, attached on the side here. Um, also, of course, as per usual, super nice detail. Looking at it right now, the only thing I'm seeing that this is going to need to have done to it, of course, is these, uh, uh, these, these uh, I don't know what you call these pecs from the injection, I guess. Uh, you'd have to remove, and there's also here, okay, this is quite thick, but for the most part, you get this like really sort of papery flash that you can basically um, you can basically tear off with your fingers, and it doesn't it leaves no residue. So this is going to, as usual, require very little work to look good. Um, and um, you can see here, it's just it's got skulls <laughs> everywhere. Um, sharp detail the one thing i'm not so sure about is these these bony protrusions from her armor going what looks to me like is meant to be going i don't know it's it's either the details too soft or they're supposed to be going under her skin so i don't know what i'm going to do about those yet uh the rest is uh just the usual awesome sharpness that you would expect from a creature caster model, including on the back here. And I'm not just talking about her badonkadonk, you know, she's got like this sort of spine detail, more skulls on all four of the shoulder pads. And uh, yeah, beautiful. Um, next, since we're talking about the torso, we have the wings. Uh, again, some papery flash here. I am looking over this and I am not seeing as usual, anything that even remotely resembles um, an air bubble or any other mold imperfection. Um, what I do have, what I do see that I'm not a big fan of is this. This is obviously this is one of these injection pegs. And now see, uh, this is one of the claws that go on top of the wings here. And now I'm going to have to cut this off and sort of it's in a very exposed spot and I'm just going to have to sort of sand it down to, I guess, whatever shape I think makes sense. And it's the connection point uh, for this claw, which, by the way, um, is broke off of this here. And this, uh, the great news is this is the only thing, the only thing that has broken off of anything. Everything else arrived intact. Some of you might remember. Um, some of you might remember. I was complaining about getting uh, getting a few broken parts uh, with the two King kits that I reviewed a while back. But uh, this, everything here is in picture perfect condition. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to trim this, and then it's gonna have to somehow match up with this part. And yeah, I, I'm also not sure I understand why these claws are separate parts in the first place. But anyway, the wings have a very nice leathery texture here, and spikes everywhere including in places where it doesn't make any anatomical sense um so that's always a plus <laughs> uh, and i'm being serious like i like the craziness of these designs so anyway here we have um we have the arms obviously uh and uh, the second one of these claws covered in armor um we have the uh the legs here and you can see she's got these 
sort of bird-like claw feet and obviously these rock parts are going to have to go into these um these slot into these holes on the base so it should all be pretty solid from the look of it um yeah uh, at the risk of repeating myself excellent detail uh very little flash um here's one of her weapons I'm actually not sure where that goes, but I'll figure it out. Uh, one one problem. Yeah, it's a spare. It's a, <laughs> see, there's another axe. This one has a hand on it, so obviously that's going to attach to one of the arms. But I don't know what the deal with this axe is. I'll figure it out. One of the one of the things that most of you are probably aware of with these creature caster kits is that the um, there's no instructions uh, except for the the Queen of Ecstasy, I think it's called, because that's like their most complicated kit. So they made instructions for that one, and for this one, you're pretty much you're pretty much left to uh, having to having to look at the uh, the instructions on the instructions on the Creature Caster website. But that's fine. Um, I mean, instructions, the pictures. Ugh, I don't know what I'm talking about today. Anyway, here's. Um, Here's another arm. I guess this one is this is the one that the axe attaches to. Uh, we've got oh yeah, this also actually broke off the sprue, but you can see this is really thin, so it also didn't like break in a way that would have damaged the part. You've got these. <laughs> this is really cool because like this weapon sort of see it sort of grows out of here, or it's attached to the armor if that's even meant to be armor, or not just sort of you know like an exoskeleton that she has. So teeth all over the place. Um, yeah, we've got another one of these and then like a hand with a uh, a hand with a different weapon to go on the other side. And I am now wondering if, oh no. Yeah, see there's two arms with like these hand weapons and then there's these. So I guess the deal is that um, there's, yeah, there's two different arm options like for the for the outstretched arms that you can choose from uh, and off the top of my head looking at this now, right now I don't know which ones I'm going to pick because they all look awesome um, still don't know what the deal is with that loose axe though now finally we have uh, we have the head options of which there are two um, looks to me like the face sculpts are actually different if you take I don't know how well you can see this on camera but the faces actually don't look exactly the same uh, this one has horns that point forward this one has horns that point backward and just looking at these now well, yeah the face sculpts are def definitely different uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna assemble both of these just so that we can take a look at them but uh, very clearly um, I, I prefer this one I don't think that's even a question I mean I'll, I'll check it out you know what it looks like once it's attached but um, I think I'm gonna go with this one uh, anyway, yeah, that's everything that's in the box. Uh, these are going to take a bath right now, and uh, then I'm going to clean them up, and I'm going to have to think about how much of this I'm going to assemble uh, before I start painting, but uh, we'll continue this when all of that is done. All right, and I'm done, or at least I've built as much as I'm going to before I start painting this thing. Um, as usual, with the Creature Caster model, it all went together pretty well. Um, there are a few problems i think mostly to do with the fact that this is just a, a much smaller size model uh, than the two king models that i've put together and also i think this one's a bit older so um it's just you know they keep getting better so the problem that that's the fact that they keep getting better is great but of course it also leaves the issue that if if you know their latest one then the older ones are just not quite that good um the uh, these two arms here fit extremely well. Um, I also found that sort of the the wrist here and this arm is a really good fit. I mean, if you look here, you can first of all the you know the, the where the parts connect is basically where there's a transition anyway. So uh, it's just you know good design. Um, where I had a massive problem was with this wrist because it just would not stay in place. I quite like the way it's positioned now, and I think it's correct. But if you look closely, you can you can see there's a bunch of problems here. Like I glued this on, and it fell off, and then I glued it back on, and then I scraped off some plastic to see if that would help, and then I put in putty. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Um, the 
but I mean, it's not a major problem. I just didn't do a good job with it. The one thing I would say really is a bit of an issue is the way like this, the two legs and the base fit together. Because I was sort of thinking I wasn't sure how I wanted to approach this. Because if you remember from before, like uh, the feet are attached to pieces of rock that slot into the base here, right? So if you want the rock around the toes to look consistent, as you're painting it, these really need to be attached. So it was clear that I had to glue these in. And then I thought about maybe, um, you know, just leaving these on and painting the rest of her separately. Um, and then decided not to because it just, it looks like it's not really going to be that difficult to like get to things. Um, but as it then turned out, and I didn't notice this until the super glue had dried, um, this, this leg fit pretty, pretty well, but on the other one here, you can see there's a gap like half a millimeter wide that I ended up having to fill with milliput. And it's just basically like you can either get one or the other to fit, but you know, it won't be slotted incorrectly into both uh, at the same time. Now this isn't a big problem because um, you'll remember uh, like this, there's going to be a wing here. Well, it's not going to cover up the back of the leg. But anyway, I mean, it's the back of the leg. Who, who looks at the back of the knee, right? What bothers me is that obviously, like here, um, this is meant to um, this is meant to connect with the skull. There's a horn here that's meant to connect with the skull here at the bottom, and this is all sort of part of her like knee armor. So I'm, I'm going to have to just like paint over this now and pretend like it's connected. But really, honestly, that's the only major problem I ran into. Um, the, the wings you can see here on the back fit really well. Also, the seam, at least at the top, is basically, is basically along where the skulls are. So not a problem there. Uh, same thing, same thing on this side. Um, also, the blade doesn't get in the way of the wing, although I'm not sure if it's not supposed to be poking between these two claws or not. That was kind of an issue. Um, if you want to avoid that problem with the wrists, of course, you can just use these. But I really prefer, I really prefer this pose. I just find that it has more attitude than with these other two where she's sort of holding them up like she's the problem is she's they, these to me look like she's holding them up like she's she's just about to attack and it doesn't fit the rest of the pose because the rest of the pose to me just sort of screams like she's kind of relaxed and just sort of standing there and looking at you and like yeah what are you going to do about it so i just i don't know i've, I've in looking at the pictures on the website i like this better so i had to deal with this now, finally, um, before I show you some assembled and comparison pictures, here are the heads. Um, this is the one I'm going to use. Um, as you can see, the horns are a near perfect fit. There's the tiniest gap here, which is going to vanish as soon as I paint this. Um, the other horn, this, uh, this is one of those cases where I really like this gap here. That's just not good parts fit. I mean, you can fix that, you know, put some milliput in there, but then I'm not sure like how this is supposed to line up here because I have it in like this. It lines up, it lines up very well here in the back, but not here. So I don't know if maybe I made a mistake there or looking at this now, I have to say, I do like how this sort of the horns sort of blend into the back of her neck here. That looks really cool. Um, this head doesn't really have that. Um, but yeah, it, it just overall, like the shape of these, these horns, they don't look, they don't look right for this model to me. So I'm going to go with this head, uh, like I had planned. Um, and, uh, but I did want to, I did want to see what the other one looks like. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, um, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to see if I can blue tack this thing together. Uh, and then we'll also do some size comparisons and stuff. And here she is, held together by the demonic powers of Blue Tack. I think 
Looking at the model now, it's very clear that it's the pose that sells this thing. To be honest, as much as I love Creature Caster, some of their female models can be a bit too cheesecakey for me, but I really like the attitude this one conveys. It's still, you know, obviously sexualized, but it just doesn't call attention to itself in the same way that the others do. Anyway, here's a comparison with my Bloodthirster, because I figure some people are probably thinking about using this as a proxy for Valkia the Bloody. I don't have that model, but I'm guessing this one's way bigger. You can see she's really about the same height as the Bloodthirster, just less bulky, obviously. Also, here she is next to my King of Ruin, because that's the only finished creature caster model I can show you. The lady models are supposed to be to scale with the lords in creature caster's range, so the King of Ruin looks massive next to her. That's really more something to keep in mind when you consider how detailed this model is, because it's also not really that big. Well, and that's about all I've got to show you. If you're wondering about my sub-assemblies, I kept the head separate because I want to be able to work on the face more comfortably and because the inside of the collar might be difficult to get to with the head attached. And the wings should be obvious enough. Those will get in the way of just about everything if I glue them on now. Anyway, I'm very happy with this model. It definitely looks as cool as I thought it would based on pictures and the quality is top notch as usual. I just don't know how I'm going to paint this one yet because I don't like the red skin collar scheme. I'm thinking pale skin and maybe blue for the armor, more like an HR Giger painting, but we'll see. That's it for this one, folks. Don't forget to like and comment, especially if you have questions, because there doesn't seem to be all that much about this kit out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Robo -shop.